Yes. Hey, uh, broadcast viewers, Dr. George Kazmi is coming at you tonight from Hilo, Hawaii. How are you guys doing? Just came to answer some questions. Welcome, welcome to my broadcast. Didn't expect to be on tonight, but uh, I was compelled to. Hey, what's going on? I'm just here in, in Hilo, Hawaii. It's raining a little bit tonight, but it was a beautiful day today. So fortunate. Thank you guys for joining my broadcast. You guys can follow me here at these dots at the bottom. No uh, OBS uh, producer tonight, just a regular phone. If you see a little bit of haze on my on my picture reflection, I, I cracked a small crack in my screen and it's going right through my camera. So that's what happens when you play hopscotch with your six-year-old. Hey, Tom the Gentleman, thanks for joining my broadcast. Uh, talent attorney, thanks for joining my broadcast. Yeah, I'm guess, guessing if your body fat is over 30%, your fertility is over. Actually, for women, it's 25%. So great, great, uh, I don't know if you've done some research, but yeah, 30%, uh, your risk of cancer goes up as well, astronomically. Hey, Laura, another Lean Body Academy member, thanks for joining my broadcast. Oh, I'm going to give you guys a special way to get 30 days free in the Lean Body Academy. No strings attached, 30 days, it's all yours, and you'll get emails every couple of days of short videos from me helping you, helping you along, kind of in your face, getting things rolling. Hey, Salmoner, thanks for sharing me out how I'm skinny but have a pregnant fat stomach. Mm. You're thin, but you're pregnant. Okay. You know, there's a lot of that in L.A. So, does that count for members too? <laughs> you members don't need a, a free month. You're already in, in the membership. But if you refer anybody, I'll give you an extra month on your membership. If you're yearly, I'll give you an extra month. How's that? Remember, it's, it doesn't really matter about how skinny you are. It matters how uh, how your body fat is. You know, there is an element in uh, in L.A. They called it skinny fat, where these small people, 120 to 130 pounds, or 40 percent body fat, not healthy guys, not healthy. Ah, uh, you know. I'm, Periscope is what made the Lean Body Academy. We wanted 500 plus members. We're going on five, you know, 500. It will be 600 in a, in a month. I mean, it's just awesome. Saving our, I didn't get that. I remember Doc saying our blank. I didn't get that. I think it was P something, but I'm not going to speculate. I'll let you repost that. Any questions that are longer than three lines, for some reason, maybe Periscope and Fixes, they all come at once. And I get all the questions at once. And I try to pick one to answer. Sometimes it's not appropriate, but uh, I try to answer them all anyway. So, yeah, body fat is playing a role. According to research, and if you want to research this yourself, you can reasonably get access for free through PubMed, The Lancet. They have paid services, but you can get a lot of the re research for free. It wasn't appropriate. Okay, thanks, Nick. Nick, Nick Nick's turning into my moderator here. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. 25% um, uh, is the limit for women. 23% is the limit for men. It's not about, oh, it doesn't look good. No, this fat is playing a negative role in a whole bunch of elements inside of our body. I want to lose weight. Yeah, well, you want to lose body fat. So what I what I want to leave with my broadcast is body fat is the key, not weight loss. Remember, muscle is two-thirds smaller than fat, but it, it weighs uh, two-thirds more. Actually, uh, it's, it's a re reverse. So I'm 5'7 and 18. Uh, Body fat is the key, and you can go to any gym, and they'll put the calipers on you. They'll get, they'll get a rel relatively within about three or four percent. Bound peens will get you within two to three percent, a little bit more accurate, but it'll get you in the ballpark, and then you can begin to do some real, real work. But for you women, you have to figure out your body fat percentage. Men too, uh, you know, we go through hormonal issues as well. Got really bad joint pain in my left elbow when I walk out. Doc, yeah, stay away from dumbbells. I know you're not going to like that. Dumbbells, kettlebells, all that's going to transfer to your joints. Trust me, I'm 53. I hurt my body a lot in the gym. What's a good time to call my office? Well, there's great doctors there anytime, Tara. Uh, they're, they're Monday through Saturday. I don't come back until the 27th, and I'm there Tuesday, Friday, and half a Saturday. And the last Saturday I teach. What are you doing on? What am I doing on here? Actually, this is with a topic about sexual organs. It was, oh, what says? Panic attack question. Stimulants will contribute to anxiety and panic attacks. Tremendously contribute. And alcohol appears to play a role as well. The opposite of what we think. We think it's a, uh, 
a sedation, but actually stimulates our central nervous system, even though we're kind of flaccid. So be careful how you try to self-medicate. To become a good listen, to become a good listen to the song. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea who Clara means is. I know you. I know I'm in the. I'm in like you know my own world, but I, I, <laughs> I'm old school. I remember Dr. Oz saying that male organs should use a should use as a dipstick for health. Think of it this way, and that's a fair question. Sexual performance is a side effect of being healthy. No question about it. Okay. It's your body's that to you, to your body. It's kind of like hair growth and nails. It's a side effect of when you, the the extra power that your body has left over. Pet attack every day, and I feel like I'm dying, but I don't eat all day. If you don't eat all day, you don't have panic attacks. Yeah, something's going on. I'm not sure what that is, but you got to seek out some professional help. Not that you're crazy or anything. Just figure out what the cause is. Is you know, do you have some blood order this uh, you know imbalances? You know, I like data, I like professional help, and then I like to give people tools so they can be able to help themselves. Hey, welcome, Katsuka. Valerie, thanks for joining my broadcast. You guys can follow me at the bottom icons. You can share me out. Just giving you some, some help with uh, understanding how important body fat plays a role in your overall functioning. Sexual hormones, uh, cancer, it is absolutely key, guys. It's key. Basic fundamental things. In my uh, profile, you can get a whole free month, 30 days, four coaching calls, all kind of material in the Lean Body Academy. It's right there. Try fruit on five, but if I eat bread and pasta or anything like that, my heart starts pounding. Yeah, there's something going on. I'm not sure what it is, but that's something you have to, you should you should get checked out. My name is George. Ellen flowers me on Twitter. Ellen, Ellen, I have no idea who Ellen is, but she's more than welcome to join me on my broadcast. <clears throat> yeah, I'm late tonight. I don't, I don't expect uh, a lot of my folks. Nick is there, but I don't expect a lot of my Lean Body Academy members because I'm so late. Jeez, it's, it's almost 20 to 9 where I'm at. <clears throat> For those of you that are new to my broadcast, I'm Dr. George Cosmides. I nearly lost my life in a bad accident at 19. My uncle had me scheduled for low back and neck uh, surgery. I have to go a different route. And uh, here I am today. I'm 53 now. Oh, Ellen DeGeneres. I know exactly who she is. She's awesome. I don't know why she would want to come on my broadcast, but she's certainly welcome too. <clears throat> I think she... Uh, yeah, she's a good show. I, I don't have a TV, but I catch it on, on, online from time to time. Yeah, 53. I'll be 54 in July. Yep. Yeah. So a lot of things that I, you know, everything I talk about, I practice. So I'm uh, the doctor who practices exactly what he preaches, and I give you guys the inside scoops uh, based on research. I teach diabetes education uh, nationwide for what's called continued education. So if you take my coursework every month, you can get. 12 hours in my profession you need 24 hours a year 12 hours virtual and then uh, 12 hours face to face so I, I teach both and my topic is diabetes but not the treatment of it more of the way to uh, adjust your lifestyle to support your body oh thank you thank you well for me my motivation is I have a daughter who's six years old and I have a wife that's 40 40 my wife is 41 Well, uh, I don't know if you know this, Mike, but Hawaii is part of the USA. Yes, it's off the continent. But my wife is from here. It's a small town, Hilo. Is hypoglycemia diabetes, is that what I, they say? Well, hypoglycemia is low blood sugar. So if I don't eat for five or six hours, I will become hypoglycemic. So, uh, and then hyperglycemic is high blood sugar. So, you know, we can vary. And I've seen people with blood sugar over 800 in my office. Hey, Lexicon 747. <laughs> interesting, interesting tag. Welcome. Mad Buster invited followers. Hey, Mad Buster. Awesome. How come I can't gain weight? Uh, probably not eating enough to support your lean body mass. You want to gain muscle weight, not bulk. That's just a, a, that's just a nonsensical way to say I just want to get fat for a while. Don't do it. Especially as you age 
it'll become harder to defeat that. And trust me, I'm 53. Uh, everything matters. Yeah, man boobs, that's right. When men get above 23% body fat, that's what will start developing on them. They'll get like a, a man boobs. That's exactly what it's called. Is 70 blood sugar good? It can be. It depends. If it's first thing in the morning, maybe. But if it's at, if it's after a meal, say an hour, maybe there's something not right. So it just depends on timing. You're going to have your highest glycogen stores first thing in the morning because your liver should be full and your muscles should be full. And then you'll have your second highest reading usually an hour after your largest meal, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on what that meal is. You want to usually keep in the range between 85, 140, 150. It could go as high as 180, depending on what you're doing. Uh, my, why losing weight is so difficult and eating food is easy. Uh, maybe you're making the wrong, uh, you know, not accurate choices. And maybe there's some emotional things spurring that on. Sometimes I'll do broadcasts where I'll discuss just how emotional triggers cause us to make bad choices. <clears throat> Not sure what you're talking about. I stopped smoking nine months before. Awesome. Just give it up, man. It's probably one of the worst habits uh, you can you can begin to start. And I'm not so certain vaping is any better, unfortunately. that's uh, That seems to be all the rage now. Hey, greetings from Turkey. Greetings. My uncle's Turkish. Greetings. And... You can try all kinds of things with smoking. I've heard acupuncture works, I've heard hypnosis works, and I've seen some people just put it down and not pick it up again. Yeah, I think anything in the lungs is troublesome. But, you know, moderation is key. I skipped breakfast, that's why I got my heart rate is too high, 21 years old. Well, what's too high? What's your heart rate? What you want to do is you want to get your resting heart rate. When you're at rest, take your heart rate. You know what will make you quit smoking? You know, I see something funny coming on here. <laughs> I know what will make you quit smoking. I got to hear this. <laughs> it's going to be something hilarious. I already know. Vaping seems more common now. Didn't see much of that 10 years ago. Oh, I don't think we see much of it five years ago. Heart rate is 31 beats a minute. That you're either super athletic or there's, there's, there's something going on. I think um, pro athletes, I'm talking about triathletes, they get around 40. 35, 40. So if, if that's you from an athletic perspective, that's pretty good. A, a good, healthy resting heart rate normally, and there are always exceptions, the lower it is, the more efficient the cardiovascular system is. Okay, I won't say it now. It's too late. You, <laughs> you have to say it. But remember, I've got young people watching my broadcast. Yeah. Remember, you want to keep to burn fat for fuel. You want to... Excuse me, let me qualify that. To potentially burn fat for fuel, you want to keep your heart rate within a range where you keep your breath. Yeah, you got to figure out why you're getting them. What's triggering that? Is it thinking about something? Is it being around someone's presence or being around smelling something? I did a whole coaching call on on uh, depression and getting the cues and anxiety. Going to the Pilot Academy and said, well, by the way, what kind of sport do you buy? Pilot Academy? I like non-traumatic sports. I don't like trauma because your body will respond when you get in your 50s based on the trauma that you subjected to in your you know, teens, 20s, 30s, and 40s. I don't say that happily. I'm not happy about that. But it will, and you'll be stuck living with it, whether it's a bad hip or low back or whatever. Yeah, Nick is right. As long as you keep your breath, you're going to stay in a state where your body can potentially most potent burn fat for fuel. Okay, you have to work on, in my opinion, what, what's getting you scared and then deal with that. You know, if it's, it's kind of like a child being afraid of a dark room, they just, it's an unknown, figure that out. <clears throat> yeah, it really doesn't matter the exercise. You can, you can uh, be in a fat metabolizing window doing resistance training. A hard punch to your thyroid helps you lose 10 pounds in a month. Eh, I would disagree with that statement. S show me the research that you're that you're referring to. But my other brain says that's just ridiculous. If you're in your 20s, if you have a lot of belly fat, it will reduce. No, no question. Uh, research is non-discriminatory with age and body fat. Uh, it appears to play a huge role, much larger than we ever considered, because it's still considered metabolically inactive. And certain fats 
like the darker fats or the organ fats, appear to play a stronger role. What about alcohol? Do you think wine is healthy sometimes? You know, you know, I had a couple of beers the other night with friends eating some sushi, but I'm lucky if I drink a dozen beers a year or have six glasses of wine a year. So I'm not anti these things. It shouldn't be something that's every other day or become repetitious. I mean, I know people with two glasses of wine every night so they can go to sleep. That's not, I don't think that's, um, I don't think that's good. You think about dying all the time. Interesting. Um, look, I took a course. Geez, it had to be 15, 16 years ago now. I remember the, the teacher's name, Jane Levastic. She stood up on stage and she said, I know a time when your cell phone won't ring, your pager won't go off. At, at, last, at that time we had pagers. And no one will bother you. And that's when you're dead. You can rest in peace and no one will ever, will ever trouble you anymore. And, that, and, you know, I think about that. I guess at the time it was odd, but I think about that now and I said, well, that's pretty profound. So don't think about something that you really can't control unless you're, you know, unless you have a death wish and you do really bizarre things. <clears throat> you're ovulating? Well, interesting. I'm not sure why I need to know that, but that's interesting. Is what wine drinkers should have. It's plenty of... Yeah, but the problem is they're drinking the phenols with the resveratrol. Now, if you can take resveratrol by itself, it's far more uh, beneficial. Where are you from, originally Greece? Uh, my father's parents are from Crete. My mother's parents are from Cologne, Germany. So I'm ha half Greek and half German. I mean, my mother's blue-eyed blonde, and my dad was like a Greek Greek. As far as my hormones are off, can't get the weight off. Yeah, you got to get your body fat down, so you have to support it. I'm giving away a free 30-day membership in the Academy. Just go there, give your name and email, and you'll get the link to start right away. I watched my friends die and got shot by intruders, so maybe that's why I think... Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry about that. But that's playing an emotional fear. That's that's a fear-based uh, emotion that's definitely cre creating havoc with you. But realize that it's just an event that happened and you just were unfortunate enough to be there. You know, I was sexually molested at eight years old. Does that mean every time I look at a, at a uh, nanny or a housekeeper that I get anxiety? No, it's just I was a little boy near someone who wasn't mentally correct. Do you see? So it wasn't me as a man. It was just me being a little boy in a place that I shouldn't have been. <clears throat> yeah, and those are what we would call in the academy emotional triggers. So every time I used to see a, a woman with a long silver chain, it would emotionally trigger me. And my idea of dealing with being sexually molested at eight years old was to work out a lot and get really strong, but I hurt myself in the process. Yeah, sexually molested, I guess you can call it, at eight years old. But it wasn't me. This is an important point. It wasn't me. It was an eight-year-old boy. Do you see the difference? What about the normal heart beating between? I'm not following that question. How old was she? I was eight years old. Who knows? 30s, maybe? Late 20s? I, I can't remember. I just got hypnotized for memories of being molested. Yeah, just just realize, I mean, what, what really rung true for me, and I, and I took some, some, I took hundreds, I probably took 150 seminars in my life, and I, and I still get, I just went to one last Saturday. Um, just realize, you know, you just happen to be there. It's not who you are today. And that was a big uh, epiphany for me. So, yeah, that that's great. That's awesome. I guess the training that I went, it wasn't hypnosis. It was just realizing uh, that I was an eight-year-old boy, and it was a, adult that was you know, mentally challenged well my wife is from uh, Hilo Hawaii and we we live in uh, California we're just here for the holidays for all her parents here her, you get this guys her grandma is 102 and still mobile she lives in a you know, assisted living facility but she still gets around still does her hair still wants to wear makeup that's pretty awesome right I don't I don't know Dr. Oz from Turkey. No, no, Dr. Oz, his, his, I think his uh, real, his first name is Manut or Manut. Yeah, I think he's a Middle Eastern of some. He seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I don't watch TV. I haven't watched TV in about 12 years. I suppressed it, but what triggered it? I know, and then it hit. 
Yeah. Just realize, you know, that it, it happened to you. According to research, it happened out of like six out of ten people were six out of ten of us were either sexually or physically molested. If you believe the research that that uh, you know came across my desk from PubMed, some would say it seems a little high. Some would say that's a conservative number. But we've all had it. It's what we make that mean as we become adults. That's the that's the issue. What are we going to make that mean 20 years later? You know, my daughter and my wife don't need to deal with that aspect of me. Oh, no question. You didn't hear of uh, child protective services or any of that. You know, parents whack their kids around all the time. You didn't see anything. You know, that was considered normal. Um, if if there was a sexual abuse or something like that, it wasn't really talked about. How many have body fat 1.7 centimeters growth to have? How many have body fat 1.7 centimeters growth? Have? I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. Women, you guys, according to research, need to be below 25%. You can check with calipers or you can check with what's called a bioimpedance scale. Whack is such a weird word. It, it is, but it, it's in some, some ways it's pretty accurate, you know? So I try to be hip, but I, my, my wife tells me I'm not. So I tend to listen to her more often lately. <laughs> she, am I a hypnotist? No. I'm not a hypnotist. You look a good person. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, in Hawaii, where I'm from, it's uh, it's it's ten to it's two hours earlier, so it's ten to seven. No question. I've been married uh, going on 11 years, and the longer we're married, the smarter she gets. How do you speak English if you're in Hawaii? Yeah, if you have an acupuncture problem, it's phenomenal. Don't worry about the weight you should be at. Worry about the body fat percentage you should be at, and it should be below 23% if you're a male. You guys got to get off this TV stuff with weight. I mean, way less. You got to think about body fat percentage. That's the key, because remember... Muscle holds about 70% water. Fat only holds about 2 or 3%. Yeah, women should be, according to research, below 25%. Once you gals start getting above 25%, you're at a greater risk for endometrial, breast, and ovarian cancer. And once you're above 30%, that risk skyrockets. I didn't eat for two days and my stomach was flat. Yeah, that's, that, uh, that's a mistake, uh, Adrian. Big boned, um, not really. There's no such thing from my medical knowledge banks about big bone. You can have some some osteohypertrophy, but your bones aren't going to grow excessively big. No. I mean, you know, rare case. Like uh, the elephant man had uh, you know, idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis, which means his bones just grew crazy. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, I'm glad. There's such a thing as dense bones? Well, you can have... There's osteoporosis or osteopenia, which means the bone is thinning, but a healthy bone is going to be dense. Are there conditions where the bone can be heavier, where the osteoblastic activity of the bone making cells work harder than the bone, the osteoclastic cells, the eating up cells? That It is, but it's not a normal process. And hormone therapy now, how fast will these hormones leave prostate cancer free now? 40. Um, well, you still want to get, you know, here, here's my whole take. You know, the Lean Body Academy, my Life Without Diabetes book in my program isn't designed to treat the disease. It's designed to support the person that has the, the weakness or the problem. That's the true way, in my opinion, if you have the time, it's not an emergency situation, to help the person the most effective way. Thank you, uh, Nick, for posting that. And you can get all, all kind of free information on my georgecosmes.com page. That's my book. Why does fat float can't sink? Because it's less dense. Like oil will float on water because it's less dense. It all deals with density and, and, and uh, molecular weight. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting your followers. I appreciate it. Best way to lose belly fat. Reduce your stress and don't count calories. It's the biggest waste of time that you could ever do from a medical perspective. If anybody tells you you need to be under 1,000 calories a day, uh, I question their research accuracy. That may be of something to do 20 years ago, but the research data we have now on 
the, fun, the importance of carbohydrates and certain fats and certain proteins. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's archaic thinking. And I'm just going by what the research says. Counting calories is the biggest waste of time. You want to get, you want to gain weight and get your body out of control? Count calories. Yeah. I went on an in-body test recently, and they measured my body. Yeah, it's, yeah. Body makeup or body fat is what you want. BMI, basal metabolic index, is again, it's becoming like the dodo bird. It's becoming outdated. Uh, I actually was des denied life insurance by MetLife. If there's any MetLife people on here, uh, because they said I. I was out of the parameters. I was about at that time. I was about 180, about about 11 percent body fat. And I'm only 5'7", and they said I wasn't uh, insurable. Believe that. How do I lose weight and not have to exercise and move, <clears throat> eat whatever I want? Oh, that's going to be tough. You, you have you have to modify your 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 intake, but you also have to understand timing of certain food. <laughs> this is just a T-shirt. <laughs> Trust me, germs are not afraid of white. They've, they've lost their fear. I had my gallbladder removed four years ago. Yeah, the problem is, and this is just, uh, this is pretty accurate overall. If you lose your gallbladder, you have no place to store bile. If you have no place to store bile, you process fats inefficiently. And if you process fats inefficiently, you also process uh, fat-soluble vitamins inefficiently, like A and E, and they're responsible for a rhythmic uh, regularity of your heart. So don't be surprised that people who have gallbladder removed within two to five years, they start getting heart murmurs. That's a fat-soluble vitamin issue. Definitely be on some enzymes for that. Do a little bit of research. You want to take enzymes that actually help support uh, bile production. You want to take care of your liver. The fourth week in the academy is a liver flush. Uh, it's based off of Max Gerson's work. How are stress and belly fat? Oh, uh, stress actually increased leptin and cortisol release. Uh, the research on that's pretty pretty clear. Yeah, actually, if you go to my previous broadcast, and I scoped, I was in my father-in-law's backyard, and he's in Hilo, his his back his backyard is Hilo, literally Hilo Bay, and I scoped that. Just go back one scope, and you'll see Hawaii, and it's pretty cool. You're Russian mafia. Okay, my doctor told me 15 minutes of sun every day is healthy. It is. That's a pretty accurate statement. I would, however, if it's if it's summertime, I would avoid a lip between 11 and 3. That's the hottest time of the day. Because belly fat is, is tough. It's hormone it's hormone related. Uh, you have to burn that. You're not going to train it off. You're not going to do sit-ups. Hey, Florida. Uh, sit-ups is, is bad in any number of ways. Bad for the spine. Uh, research is pretty clear. You're, you're not going to train away your body fat. It doesn't work that way. I, you know, I wish it did. I'd be like 7%, but it doesn't work that way. Do no kefir. I recommend vegan kefirs. I don't recommend dairy kefirs anymore, and that's unfortunate. I have nothing against dairy farmers, but uh, the research I've read is pretty profound. <sighs> well, too much of yeah, too. I would say too much sun ages skin. You have to get your body to burn fat for fuel. It's a process. What's wrong with fairy or dairy kefir? Um, you have to read the research. Just type in. Uh, commercial dairy uh, problems and you'll pull up some some negatives and just go after like the places like the Lancet or PubMed uh, the studies don't look good the most pro uh, the study that affected me the most was a simple uh, very prosaic study where our commercial cattle would not be acceptable in Europe because their standards are our, our cow, cows here commercial cows don't meet uh, bacterial standards pretty sad so they, they measure the amount of bacteria coming out of the udder Moreover, from a, from a more, uh, I guess, uh, uh, evolutionary point of view, we're still, the only man, we're still the only mammal that drinks another mammal's breast milk. I find that strange. Uh, so I just do to stick to vegan sources. Yeah, I really don't care about dairy being organic or certified. It's still a dairy product. Although I do recommend whey isolate, which is dairy-derived. Again, you have to look at it uh, for what it does. It's a very high biological value. So uh, people say, oh, you're, you know, you have double standards. I don't. I don't think I do. I, I go after things that Reacher says function the best in the body. Where isolate function is the best in the body. Commercial dairy appears to have all kind of problems associated with it. And again, it's not me. <laughs> I'm not happy when I say these things. Trust me. I've never heard of butter kefir. I recommend Mike vegan kefir, coconut kefir I like. Uh, if you have a bad digestive problem, 
get a you know pint of coconut kefir and have an ounce or two a day. I guarantee you it will help you. Actually, if you go to Amazon, if you're in the academy, you go to Amazon. I, I put the things in my store that are right there. That's right, croaky frogs. You got it. That's that's pr prolific here in in Hawaii. Depends what protein shakes you're drinking, Mike. You know, the ones I recommend in the Academy are low, low to no sugar and a high biological value and the sweetened with stevia. So it depends what's in them. No, they're not plant-based. You can have plant-based, but understand their biological value effectiveness is about 30% lower. Cottage cheese, it's still a dairy product. I used to sit on the fence with it, but now I'm recommending just avoid it. Kefir is a fermented, uh, I don't want to say beverage because it can come in different forms. There could be... Uh, like raw sauerkraut has kefir-like properties, uh, biologically active for the gut properties in them. Kefir, like I said, I, I, I opt for the vegan ones. Kombucha is another fermented product. I think it's beneficial. Kefir is a grain. I think kefir is the process, not necessarily the element. So you can have, someone said there's water kefir, there's coconut kefir. There's, uh, what else did I see? Um, I saw pineapple kefir. So it's, it's, not, it's not a grain. But good question. I had to think about that for a minute. You can probably make kefir out of just about anything uh, um, pl uh, plant-based, even, even dairy-based. But that's not, you know, <laughs> I go to the store and I buy it off the shelf. You don't want me making your, your kefirs. It, the kitchen would be a mess. My thoughts on smoothies, what's in them is the key. It's like saying um, it's the quality of what's inside of them. Does that make sense? You want to start with good things. No milk, no fruit juice, things like that. I thought protein fits person, it's bad for pulmonary. Well, remember, protein is the building blocks of, of life. When I was in college, that's what we were taught. It's also the building blocks of muscle tissue. You know, if you don't repair your muscle tissue after just functioning on a regular day, it'll actually break down, you'll make your body actually get fatter. Actually, I did a periscope on how uh, exercise can make us fatter. Thoughts on something that would convince corn. Uh, all I got was corn. I don't recommend corn products, unfortunately. They're probably the most highly GMO'd um, element. And it took me about a year of reading the research before I finally said, you know what, GMO can't be, can't be good for us based on the research that I read. It seems to cause disruption in the GI tract, much like much like fluoride or heavy metals does. I don't think it's the same pathway, but it seems to cause problems. And if you cause problems with your GI tract, you're gonna you're gonna compromise your immune system. You know, I don't know the, the differentiation between different colored corn. I just know corn in general uh, is highly GMO and has a tends to have a high glycemic uh, load. Yeah, that's the research that I read also about GMO being inflammatory. Is half a banana okay? Did you, I didn't get the full question. Take a tapeworm pill for weight loss. You mean, you mean putting a tapeworm in your body to lose weight? Oh, that's extreme measure to me. Remember, the goal, I want you guys to get this, that are focused on this weight loss issue. The goal is reducing fat and improving health, not just losing weight. Heck, if you want to lose weight, just wear a rubber suit and sit out in a hot car. You'll, you'll, your health will decline. You may have a heart attack, but you'll guarantee you'll lose weight. You, would you really want to put an, a tapeworm inside your body? I mean, think about the dynamics of that. That's just crazy to me. <laughs> so I'm hoping you're joking. I'm hoping you don't do that. Don't do it if you're thinking about doing it. Trust me. Yeah, see, I don't know... I don't know of a differentiation between organic corn, GMO corn, yellow corn, or wild corn as far as glycemic load. And that's, I focus a lot on that in the academy by eating foods with a relatively low glycemic expression. And that's really uh, what all these extreme diets that you see out there are trying to do, trying to lower your insulin level so you release more fat burning hormones. And I would say that's accurate. Some doctors may roll their eyes at me, or, uh, but that's pretty accurate. That's what they're trying to do. Yes, it helps one to start making my own a nutrition and weight loss. Yeah, but just remember, Sean, you have to be consistent. A weekend's not going to do it. A week's not going to do it. Anything that you get into. Thank you. I didn't get that last question. Hey, thanks, thanks for joining your followers, Jenny. 
whatever you're going to get into, your business or your health, you have to be in it for the long haul. If it's a shotgun approach, I'm telling you, especially as you get older, your body's not going to respond as well. That's why the, the Lean Body Academy, my book, is all designed to be almost seamless. You do it and you just create better habits, but nothing is forced. Boot camps and things like that, they may sound nice, but that, you know, after six months, where, you know, where are you at? That language looks really cool. You know, you know maybe Periscope could put a, a translator on here, like a, a transposh. How do I feel about steroids? I don't feel anything about them. But if you think that I take them, I am flattered. Make myself throw up until I reach my weight goal. Do you really want to do that? Do I? Is that really a question that you want me to answer rationally? Bulimia is never the answer, ever. Yeah, but see, it doesn't. What does that mean? You were cleansing. Do you see? You have to really. Uh, it's like. It's like just imagine you were starting a business. You want to have mentors involved to guide you down the right path. Or all you'll do is waste your time and your money. No, don't be sorry. Uh, if you're thinking that way, I want to, you know, conjole you in a kind way and say, you know, that's not the way you want to go. You're probably pretty young, maybe maybe less than 25 years old to even be thinking about that. It's going to affect you when you get older. Our fat people lying when they claim they're our fat people lying when. Mike, your questions are getting a little bit. Um, uh, confusing to me let's put it that way you're not making a lot of sense there my friend at least to me anyway your body makes steroids 24 hours a day so remember if you take one hormone whether it's birth control pills or testosterone you're affecting the a whole sequela of chemicals in your body throwing off your whole imbalance <clears throat> so maybe not something you want your first choice to be you want to get your body fat down. That's what your focus should be on. Get your body fat down. Look, I want to thank you guys for uh, coming on my my uh, my broadcast tonight. I really appreciate it. I want you guys to have a happy holiday season. Uh, remember, it's about sharing your kindness, your joy, and uh, I'm gonna leave you guys with thank you. I'm gonna leave you guys with two things. Uh, there's gonna be always someone having a worse time than you. Always. Cut them some slack, especially this time of year. A little bit of kindness to them can go a long way. Second thing I want you to do. Someone over this holiday rush to get gifts or presents or go to their grandma's house is going to cut you off. And just keep in mind, they're not cutting you off. They're just making a mistake in front of you. We've all made errors in judgments. And we want people to cut us some slack. Cut them some slack, I'm telling you. You'll feel better. You, the world will be a better place because of it. And uh, you know, that's all I have to say on that. Okay? Thanks, guys, for watching my broadcast. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.